Hello guys, welcome to Hanks Precision Gun Parts. And today is August the 4th, 2019. It's a Sunday afternoon. Today is my birthday. I am 51 years old today and I'm still in the shop working, making parts. I got a pretty large order the other day for some barrel bands and the guy that ordered these ordered more than I had in stock. Now, if you guys are familiar with some of my parts, you know I made a bunch of these barrel bands here a while back, and we've got a whole bunch of different sizes, and the particular size that this guy wanted is this number 19. That's not a big secret. So it's a number 19 is the one he wanted, and he, like I said, he ordered way more than I had on the shelf. So I told him I'd set up the machine, I cut some material, set the machine up and I started running these yesterday morning. I'm almost done with his order so I can get these done and shipped out there to him first of next week, Monday, Tuesday. I'll probably have these done tonight before I quit uh, working for the day. I've been running in and out all day running these parts, been doing some other things, but we've been running these parts. And I wanted to bring you in and show you how I turn this chunk of aluminum into one of these barrel bands. Some of you like the CNC machining videos, you find it interesting and uh, fascinating, and I do too. I love CNC machining, I love to make these parts. So I'm gonna bring you in and show you how we turn a chunk of aluminum into a usable part. Okay guys, so come on in, I'll show you what we've got in here and how I'm gonna run this part. This particular part takes three operations. So we've got three vices in the machine. I'm going to start by loosening all three vices because this cycle has is done running. So what we're going to do is loosen all three of these vices so that I can get the parts out. I'm going to start with this one because this is the done part. I'm going to blow it off nice and put it in this box this part here is now ready to go into the third station so I'll bring you in a little bit closer here and show you this third station what we've got going on there what we've done is machined a pocket out of this aluminum soft jaw to the same exact shape as this part right here so we're going to put this part into that pocket and it's a perfect fit it has to be just right to go in there then I've got this piece of aluminum that's going to sit down in here and hold it in place that keeps me from having to crank this vice jaw so many times okay so that's that's in place ready to go and if you notice this vice jaw here is set up for a different size barrel band so we've got this outside shape and if I want to run a different size say for the number 17 barrels I can just flip this jaw over here and we'll run the 17 so we've got two jaws cut out to the exact shape then you can look at the second vise this is our second operation and you'll see that that keyhole looks like a keyhole it's cut for this piece this is what comes out of the first operation. So it goes in here like that, upside down. And it doesn't take very much pressure to, to hold that in there. These Kirk vices are capable of producing like 12,000 pounds of force. Okay, and then the beginning of the operation starts out with this aluminum block. And it's going to sit in these hard jaws that have a step machined in it, okay, and it sits there, and I'm going to slide it over next to this stop, and I'm going to tighten it up. Now this one gets a little bit tighter because that one right there, this first operation is the operation that takes the blunt force of all the machining. The, the tools get on it pretty heavy. So now we're going to close the doors, and I'll let you watch this thing run. Now there is coolant running, so 
you're not going to get to see a nice clean view there will be coolant splashing around and we just have to deal with that but I think you guys can figure out what we've got going on so here's what it looks like set up and ready to run okay now I'm going to try to explain to you guys what's going on as it's going on and I have to talk loud because the machine's loud the machine has a cooler on it the coolers running the air conditioners are running um, a lot of ambient noise in here so what we first thing we do is just hit the cycle start button and the machine's going to start to work it changes the tool out to the face mill and it's bringing that part to the length that i asked it to So after the face mail, we're going in with a center drill. We're going to center drill that one spot there and a little spot right there. That's the center drill that's going to create the hole for the set screw to go in. That is the tap drill for the set screw. Now we're coming in with a 3 16 carbide three flute aluminum cutting end mill and that creates a clearance hole for the set screw and the outer wrench. And now we're tapping the hole. Now that the hole's tapped, we're going to put in a 390 drill and drill the clearance hole for the ramrod. I could have set that drill up to drill straight through there, but it gets a lot of strings and chips on it. And we tried to set that up so it didn't do that. Unlike this drill here, you see all the chips on that. We do try to avoid bird nests when all possible. Now this is cutting the outside shape. We're going to do that in two passes and then a finish pass. There's the finish pass. We slow down a little bit and we just take off five thousand. Now it's going to jump inside and machine the hole for the barrel to slide through. That little tool there cuts the clearance inside. So that, that allows us to make a taper on the part. Then we go back to the tool we had that goes all the way to the bottom and cuts one diameter, comes to the top and cuts the second diameter goes to the other side, cuts off all the chucking stock, and then we're done with that tool. Now here's a chamfer mill, that's a 10 degree, and that's what puts our nice little chamfer on the part. And we chamfer the inside of the hole for the ramrod to start in. It just gives it a little bit larger hole for you to hit. Makes it easier to find it. And then we chamfer the other side of the part. That's the beginning. 
Now we're going to come in here with a little bitty ball nose end mill. And we're going to engrave the number 19 on that part so that I know what part number it is. And then the part is done. And they're all ready to come out of there now. So I'm going to blow them off. Just so that you guys can kind of see them now. I'm not going to run another cycle. But here's the first operation. So we turn that aluminum block. We mill everything away. You see the aluminum block, how it started out. We mill everything away. We've got a recess inside. We put our number 19 on. This is the side that goes towards the action. So that's we slide that down the barrel first. Then we take that out. We flip it over here. It does a little bit of machining. Cuts off the chucking stock. Puts our nice little chamfer on here. Comes in, chamfers this hole out a little bit. Then we take this out of here. Put it into this vise. Then drill and tap and cut a clearance hole for our set screw that holds that in place. So there you have it guys. That is just one little quick operation that we do here at Hank's Precision Gun Parts. I wanted to bring you in and show you that today before I get these finished up. I've got four parts left to run and I'm going to have this production job done. I want to thank the customer for ordering all of these and he knows where he can get more and he will be ordering more I'm sure so any of you guys that need custom orders or quantity orders just give me a call and I'll work you in we'll figure out something to get the parts to you in a timely manner at a fair price and top quality parts at the same time so till the next time fellas check out Hank's Precision Gun Parts and we'll see you later